So we're going to be exploring how to make an API request in a component that is just a function. And we're going to be using the new React hooks, specifically the use effect one. Now first I kind of want to show you guys how this works. And I have the example from the docs right here. So I currently have a state of a counter and every time you click the counter, we increment it. And then we have this use effect here. And what happens is the default behavior is we have a function that we pass to it. And this function gets called every time the component has finished rendering. So after the component finishes rendering, we're updating the title on the number of times we have counted. So what this looks like in action is you'll watch the title up here is zero and this is zero. If you watch them when I click the button, this is going to increment, then that's going to increment afterwards. So it happens right after. So after it finishes rendering, it, the effect gets called and this gets updated. And this can happen as many times as I click it and you can see it's just kind of one behind. So what we can do to make an API request with this is after we render this, uh, we call the API request. But we don't really want this to render every single time uh, that the, the component is rendered. We only want to have it one time maybe. So for that, there's this second parameter that we can pass in, and this controls how or when this use effect is called. So we can pass in a array here. And then if we just do an empty array, what will happen is it will only be rendered after the first time the component has rendered. So basically it's similar to component did mount. So we can take a look at this. If I increment this, we're gonna notice it stays at zero and it never, never increases, right? So the first time this component mounts, the state is zero. So it sets the title to you clicked zero times. And then after that, it never updates. Um, we can also pass in here uh, values. So for example, count. So now what will happen is use effect will be called every time count is incremented or count changes. So we can click on this and we can see it now works again because it's now only going to change when the count changes. Well, it only gets called whenever count increments. So this is helpful. We can just do this empty bracket to now make an API call because now this is going to act like a pointed mount and that's usually where you could put an API call. So here what I can say is I can say const response and we can make this an asynchronous function and I'm going to fetch some data. Now I'm just going to use the random user API here and so I'm going to grab this URL and we'll fetch that and we'll get some data back um, and we're going to say response.json and let's call this data. Um, and then what you can see here, it's going to be results and then there's going to be an array and then we have our item here. So we can say um, const um, item is equal to data.results and we're getting the first item and we can just destructure that if we want to. Okay, so now this item, what I'd like to do is I can update the state and pass it to that. So I can say const uh, person and set person use state. Um, and at first, the person is just going to be null. And then after this is finished loading, we're going to say set person and we're going to set the person to this item that we get back. Uh, and then down here, we can render that. So I'm going to say div. And I'm just going to say person and. So we're only going to render this div when we have a person. And then I'm going to say person dot. And we can just get the name and we'll get the first name. So we'll save that. And now we can come look at our component and we can see the name. And you'll notice every time we click this, it's not going to refetch a new user. So the name stays the chain, stays the same. Now, again, if I were to get rid of this, uh, we could, and now every time I click this button, you notice it does that, and I think we have it in an infinite loop, so let's turn that off. Um, there we go. So it looks like what I just did was, uh, so this gets called every time that uh, the component fish finishes rendering, um, and then we basically tell it to re-render. So it was just an infinite loop there. We tell it to render again when it's finished rendering, it calls this and just loops and loops and loops. Uh, so we probably don't want to do that, but this works. Um, and now the next thing we can do is we can kind of make this generic. Uh, and we can also make this, before we make it generic, we can make this into uh, 
uh, a loading as well. If we want to add like a loading indicator or something. So for example, I can add loading here and we can say set loading and we can say loading is true by default. Um, and then we're going to say after we get the person, we can say set loading is false. And I believe these will be batched together into one update. Um, but I'm not quite sure, but I believe how it works is both of these, it'll say set person, set loading, and it does it asynchronously. So they're going to be batched and the update should happen in one uh, render. Um, and then now with this loading, we can use that as an indicator here. So if we're loading, we're going to render a dot 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 loading. Otherwise, we can render our person. And now if I refresh the page, you can see the loading pops up there for a second. So now if I wanted to, I could make kind of a generic fetch component or fetch hook if I wanted to. So I could say use fetch. And you could kind of put your own custom logic in here. But in this case, I'm basically just going to copy what we did right here. And now instead of person, I'm going to pass in data. I'm going to say set data and we'll just make it real generic. So we're going to say set data. And then at the bottom of this, we're just going to return data comma loading. Um, and then maybe we pass in the URL here as a parameter. So now we can get rid of this. You could say, oops, URL. And now I can say const um, use fetch. We'll pass in that. And now I can get the data and the loading and we can push pass in our data there. So now I can put in any URL to an API. Um, I can display a loading indicator while that's loading and then when I get the data back, I'll get it and put it there. Um, and we can see this it works exactly the same, but now it's generic and we could pass any URL in there. And I think this has a lot of potential and you can kind of create your own kind of fetch that makes sense for the API and the project that you're working on. So this looks pretty cool. Um, and that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.